When the communist system came to an end, there was a tremendous sense of hope in the country. Things could only get better now. In fact, for a lot of people, things had got worse and incomes have continued to fall. The hope was that with the end of the communist era, markets would take their place. In the European Union, markets are well established. People have got high incomes. That was bound to follow here. And yet the truth is that for a lot of people, as markets have come into the economy, things have got decidedly worse. The transition to a market system proved far from easy. People wanted to buy different things from those the state had planned for them. Therefore resources had to move from one kind of production to another. Some factories closed down and people became unemployed. It took time for resources to move to other forms of production and life was difficult. The resulting unemployment left the society well inside the opportunity cost curve. With less output than before, incomes were on average lower. One of the main streets in Sofia, fairly typical scene, lots of people at the side of the road selling vegetables and flowers grown in their own gardens. You don't see very much of this in Western Europe, but then incomes are much higher and people don't feel the need to do such things. So we're looking at a fairly low income society here. And yet, incomes have been growing in Bulgaria and other Eastern European countries in recent years. But the problem is that when incomes begin to grow in low income societies, most of the benefits tend to go to the higher income groups. And it's only after a period of some years that the lower income groups tend to benefit as well. So even though things are getting better in Eastern Europe, they're getting better very slowly for lots of lower income people. Let's use this diagram as a representation of the Bulgarian economy in 1990 after the collapse of communism. At this time there were very few consumer goods and a large volume of resources committed to military goods. Mostly guns and little butter if you will. The resources of the country were not being employed efficiently and as a result the country was at point S. Point S lies inside the production possibility curve. With the collapse of communism, Bulgarians gradually moved to a market economy, which produces more butter and less guns. This point is illustrated on the diagram as point W on the production possibility frontier. The opportunity cost of producing more butter would be the production of less guns. This requires a switch of resources. Labour and capital that previously went to make military equipment would now be used to make consumer goods such as butter. However, after 50 years of working in a planned economy, with few incentives and poor coordination, management, workers and capital are ill-suited to making consumer goods. As a result of this resource immobility, the economy shifts to point T, giving less national output rather than more. Resource immobility has had real effects on the lives of people in Eastern Europe. In the East German town of Wittenberger, the young sought opportunities in the West, leaving crumbling homes and factories. Others have lost their jobs and see few opportunities. Oder und nach Bayern runter oder alles nach dem Westen runter. Die Jugend haben da keine Chance mehr hier. Und ich, mein Alter kriegt keine Arbeit, 7.50 Uhr. Also ich würde sagen, dass wir, also ich werde auf jeden Fall mich woanders bewerben. Weil hier bringt das glaube ich nicht mehr viel. Das sieht man auch, hier wird es immer weniger mit, der, mit den Arbeitsstellen und so weiter. Only as resources gradually get used in places where society values them do incomes begin to rise. Resource immobility is a problem for all economies, not just the planned economies of the former Soviet Union. All economies go through periods of substantial unemployment caused by resource immobility. <laughs> 